Hey, we're live on the page. We live, we live, y'all. What's going on? What's yo, going yo. on, everybody? It's dark as hell. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, we would love for you guys to like and share this live right now. Like and share. Yeah. Like and share. Yeah, share, share, share. We'll give you share, guys like, like 45 seconds to like and share this video. And also while you are liking and sharing this video, let me also remind you, we do have our Changemakers YouTube channel that you could also subscribe to, to where you get all the updates on everything that is Changemaker related here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So also go ahead and subscribe to that to keep you up to date on the latest Changemakers Uncensored episodes and other little tidbits that we do here in the city. All of that. Yeah. yeah. All of that. And, and, and just in case you do miss this episode, we, we we pray we don't we don't want you to miss this episode, but just in case you're able to watch it on YouTube, you're able to send it to all your family and all your friends, all your cousin and auntie and thems, and they're able to subscribe to it as well. Let's let's do our best to subscribe and support the movement that we got going on here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Amen. <laughs> all right um so i would say i think that i need this for myself before alicia takes it away i need a breather how many of you guys need just like an introductory wusa i know i need one so can yeah. we i, I think yeah. kid way need one do you guys want to take like a deep <laughs> breath like a large deep breath yes yes okay. All right. Okay. Is everybody ready to go? Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Hello, 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 everybody. Hopefully you liked and shared this video. Everybody tuning in right now. We are the Change Makers. This is our second episode, episode number two. And um, we are, we have a list of topics. We, some really good stuff we're going to talk about tonight. Of course, the, the biggest thing we really want to talk about is our event this weekend. Um, it is on Friday. It is the voter registration party party it's gonna be a party so right. um we have a secret location for that and if you would like to get the location one hour prior to the event starting please go to the voter registration party event on facebook um make sure you share that as well and if you click find tickets at the top it will prompt you to enter your information where you will enter your email, you'll get an email email one hour prior with the location. Again, we said this is a party, party. So come out all with black. us. Yes, all black attire. All black. Bring your flashlights. Um, so this yes. is this is going to be a fun weekend. Right, it's going to be it's going to be a good time. So everybody needs to come out to that. Um, so we are going to find the link, Kidway. And we'll drop it in the comments, the link to yes. the event. Yes. And if you haven't tuned in before, we are Changemakers, social justice organization here in Fort Wayne. My name is Alicia Rouse. You guys want to introduce yourselves? Ladies My first. My name is Delana Saunders. My name is Kibway Cooper. My name is Delante Jackson. Yes. And we are... The change, the change, change maker. maker. I was waiting for that to come in. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Change Makers Uncensored, where we are not scripted. Nothing is planned. We just have a list of things we kind of want to hit on and um, kind of express ourselves um, and give our opinions and whatnot and just kind of freely talk about what's going on. So um, we're going to do like an in-depth uh segment here where we just have a few questions or a few topics that we kind of want to go into. So um, the first thing we really want to talk about um, is why we do what we do. Why are we here? Um, what has motivated each of us to um, really get 
in, more involved with the community or to become a change maker or, um, you know, just, just to get out there and, and really step outside the box and, um, you know, dev de devote so much time to what we are doing, what has brought us here. Um, so who wants to start? I'm going to you, kid boy. You're right next to me on my left. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, um, oh man, why, why do we do this? Why do we spend hours in meetings? Why do we log on to Zoom calls with organizers from across the state? <laughs> why do we stalk websites and, uh, social mm. justice platforms to get Stop. every little bit of information that we can uh, because if we don't do it for ourselves, who else is going to do it? Um, if we don't take a very proactive approach to how we exercise our freedoms, um, you know, what's the point? Uh, it's, it's. But why is it personal to you though? What makes it's it personal, personal to, to you? me because, um, you know, I, I grew up in Gary, Indiana. Uh, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, I grew up around and in an environment where there's very, very limited life outcomes. And that always bothered me growing up. And so, um, you know, I realized pretty early, thankfully, because I had some really great uh, hood mentors uh, that didn't let me <laughs> too, too far off Good the path. Mention. Yeah, um, you know, and so I realized that we have to make a way for ourselves. And, and part of that is breaking the cycle. And sometimes the cycle is very closely related to your environment. And um, my goal, you know, when I left Gary, Indiana, was just to excel at everything I possibly could and demonstrate that that courage of getting out of your comfort zone is what can build value in your life in order to help you break the cycle in order for you to help in order to help you like establish new um, expectations for yourself and for your life and for my nieces and nephew who are in Gary, Indiana, who are going to grow up and see the same things that I saw, I don't want them to feel as trapped as I did. I don't want them to feel as, mm. as lost as I did. I don't want them to look at the world and realize that nowhere, anywhere is anyone talking to you. Right, <laughs> right. Like you're invisible. And I don't want that to be. Um, I come from a very religious uh, loving family. Um, but even in that, I think we can very much allow our churches to become our little comfort zones where we get to escape into this land of faith and imagination. Um, but then we walk out of that church and we right back in the same old, same old. And I couldn't stand that. That used to bother me so much. How can God be so great when I'm in church, but when I go outside, mm. nothing about my life is glorious. Nothing about mm. my life is something that I would want someone else <laughs> to, it? To, to, it, to live. And I'm not talking about the peace you have in your soul. I'm not talking about this idea that when you die, you know, there is a, a, a hereafter that is divine and, and full of all of your favorite people and the folks who went on before you. I'm not saying that because I think that is represented in vastly different ways from one person to the next. Um, mm -hmm. But what I am saying is that here on this earth where we are supposed to be an example, it's really hard for me to reckon with this idea that I should always live beneath this privilege that I'm supposed to have. And the only common denominator there was the information that I was getting, the opportunities I was getting, and the environment that I was in. And so my goal has been to break those cycles. And as I get older, I'm gonna be 30 at the end of this year, and I see my uh, my niece and my my nieces and my nephew also just you know wide-eyed and full of life and taking it all in. 
I want them to know that there is so much more than what they see around them, that there are mm -hmm. no limits. You don't have to just do what you see around you. You can do something totally different. Not only can you do that, but it could be awesome. You don't have to just live on the fringes and just expect life to just give you whatever the hell it gives you. Like there's a much more abundant way of living. And I think for black and brown people, we have to be incredibly driven to make that happen because nothing about society will tell you that. Every time he talks, it's like, Mm -hmm. it, it it just well. perfect it's just perfect it just fits right in there it fits right into everything you're thinking I'm saying, take, and, take and your I time get work that i remember it so well and i still i still can feel it and i think that's what i'm running from all the time right that's what i'm always i'll always feel it on my heels and that's what pushes me forward and that's why i joined the change makers um, I was, I am involved in a lot of different entrepreneurial endeavors. You know, I got buddies who own their own Amazon stores and doing 80K a year. I, I know, you know, buddies who are dropping online products and doing really well for themselves. I'm going to drop an online product. I have a podcast out. I have a lot of expansion in my future that I see, but I still feel the need to do this work. And maybe I'm wasting my time. But no, I can't couldn't be. expect anything that is worth my time to not be difficult. And so I don't think that anything we're doing is a way. It couldn't be a waste. There's no I, way I it's a waste. Not be, if, if it gets <laughs> one person to vote that never voted, if it gets one person to be right. more objective about their life and, and more active in the way their future looks and turns out, and they don't just accept what society and their community and the hood and everything else just wants to drop on you. So Kim Way, what does looking, so you said that you want people to be a little bit more active. If one person could be a little bit more active in how the rest of their life looks, what does that look like? I think it Being looks a little like, bit more active. I think it looks like first establishing what you want. What do you want? What is important to you? What are your values? Mm -hmm. And once you figure that out, then you have to exercise every tool in your life to align yourself with that value, with those things that you want on your deathbed to be thinking about. Because that's what's important. All this other stuff, the trending things, you're never going to be thinking about that stuff when you're about to die. I have been in some near-death situations, and I promise you that is not ever what you think about. I think it, I think it's, you know, like, I think it takes a, a it takes a lot of people sometimes to, you never know who is going to be that person to get through to somebody. Okay. We could talk to 20 people today and only one person really took in that message. Yeah. So I think it's important that you have a variety of people also doing these things because it might take you to get through to someone or what you have what you have to say that will resonate with someone and, and to make them more active, you know, That's right. I mean, there's a point in our, each of our lives, I'm sure we were like, okay, it's time for me to move. Like I got to do something like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I, we all had that moment, almost like a snapping moment. Like we just snapped, like, I, I can't sit around anymore. Like I have so to Alicia, do something. With that, you want to answer the question? Yeah. So my story is really the same. It's always the same. My kids, like, you know, they were, I, I look at them and I'm like, what, what things do they, maybe they don't tell me that they experience, you know? And I wonder how bad those experiences were and what made, what, what made them, how did it make them think? You know what I'm saying? And so I'm always like, I wonder what kind of racism they could have you know, experienced without me knowing and how it affected them. And so I'm like, I, I can't sit around and continue to watch this happen without doing something or at least putting my best foot forward to try and make changes because I want to have a hand in their future. So if I can, like you said, make one person vote, make one person get active in the community um 
you know, that, that helps the overall, the, the bigger picture. And so, you know, that was really important to me to make sure I have a hand and a say in my kids' future um, so that they don't have to experience that, those kind of things because it, it hurts my heart to think about what they could have experienced that I don't know you know, because I, you know, we've experienced so much, like, what are they not saying? And they're boys, you know, they're old, so, you know, my older two, they're not going to tell me everything, you know, they're going to handle it accordingly or, you know, so that was my, that's my, why am I here? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Um, and so those answers were amazing. I, you listen, what they said is my answer, but um, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to look at some of the comments here um, and thank some of the people for joining us. I saw Darren said, hey, Changemakers. Hey, Darren, um, you guys can also post your questions. Any questions that you have, just put them in the chat and we will get to them um, as we see them. Hello, Doug. Hey, Shay, that's Pinky. And we got something to talk to Pinky about, too, because um, Friday, the protest. Mm, 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 Pinky, mm, all right? Mm, um, mm. But, <laughs> uh, so we, we, can go, <laughs> we can go to the next topic until we get some questions in the comments. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. Um, okay. Ooh, this one's going to get a little sticky. Um, hey. Purpose... Purpose over clout chasing. Ooh. I'm going to start with Delana because I think Delana got the tea. Delana got the tea. <laughs> she always got the tea. You don't hide me up. Let me stay calm, okay? Um, Get on. So it's uh, purpose over clout chasing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So clout is temporary. Um, and purpose is forever. Purpose mm. will be that thing that you'll be thinking about when you are in a life or death situation like it was there. So um, I don't think we have to worry about the cloud chasing because cloud can go out with Facebook, it can go out with Instagram, um, but purpose will not do that. It will always live with you whether you're doing the work or not. Um, and I think that leads us back to the very first question, why are you doing this? Um, I believe that everyone change makers are pretty much doing everything that we're doing because we feel called to this work. Um, and so I would not be doing this at all in, at this capacity if I did not feel called to the work. Um, I do believe that I um, serve a specific purpose in this work as uh, does everyone else. Um, we all have to figure out exactly what our purpose in this work is, right? Um, but Cloud chasing is when you kind of just go on your own thing. Like, oh, it looks like I want to be the leader today. Let me go and try to, you know, get an interview or blah, 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 whatever it might be. But your purpose might be to be the, the most loyal follower or the most loyal uh, assistant, whatever it might be. So if the leader is called to lead and that leader does not have the follower, which happened to be you or the assistant, where would that leave our leader? right? We know that we lose our leaders all the time and typically um, very early at early ages, right? So um, we really need to protect our leaders, but we leave our leaders uh, open and exposed when they don't have the right soldiers around them. So we need to make sure that we know whether we're called to be the captain, you know, the general, uh, the foot soldier, whatever it might be. Just know what you are called to do and what your purpose is. I would say that. Um, stay in your lane nice answer wasn't it yes yeah, it, it really lane. was stay in your lane stay stay in your uh, position you know know your role mm -hmm. you know because some you people don't know your role and shut your mouth some, exactly right some people don't they'll be front and center come on come like, on Delonte. talk to us <laughs> he'll be laughing like oh let me let me be quiet let, let me not oh, so 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 i i am doing my best I just want everybody to know I'm human just like everybody else. And I want to make sure that I keep the clout chasers names out of this conversation. The reason why is because they know who they are. And to the point that they lot mentioned, there's a difference between purpose and somebody who chases clout. Someone who chases clout, as was mentioned, is temporary. They're not going to last forever. 
and everybody and their mama can see who is just out for an appearance. Who I don't is think they can always that. see. I think sometimes it's so deep in them, they just be moving on actions but, but, and really don't know. But but at the same time, real recognize real. The true individual, individuals who are blind to it, yes, they cannot see. I agree. But individuals who are real and about the purpose of the mission, of the purpose of whatever is trying to be accomplished, they are really the ones who are able to weed out. Now, I am a firm believer that everybody has their place, even the clout chasers. What we sometimes don't want to admit is the negativity yeah. helps push the ones who are trying to do what is right on. So I, I don't mind clout chasers. Um, I call them how I see them because I know they have a, a specific purpose, but their purpose yeah. is not bigger than the overall message. Is their purpose that, to irritate everybody? Because that's what I've been getting. <laughs> well, <laughs> but 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 at the yeah. same time, their purpose but at to the, irritate everybody. But, but at the same time, and we're gonna talk about this in the last section. But at the same time, if you didn't have that individual, how do you know you're actually doing something right? There's always somebody out there in the world that's negative, that says you're not doing it right, that pushes you in the right direction. Like, you know what? You just hating because you just mad because, you know, I, I have this going on. So since you are identifying what you don't like, which is actually a personal problem, then I must be doing something right. Jesus had clout chasers, them scribes and Pharisees. Martin Luther King Jr. had clout chasers. Malcolm X had clout chasers. They Nelson didn't kind of like war. Chasers. There but, were it's kind of like around, but they didn't have but, them. Okay, but you know what I mean. That, okay, but they were around, and even back then, they couldn't oh, yeah. get rid of everybody. But the purpose and the movement had to continue. So even now, you know. With me, right, and this huh? is me person. This is me personally. You know, if I, I know who I'm, let me not go there. Um, let me say it this way: If we don't have clout chasers, then there's times where I question: Are we doing what is right? Right. There's always going to be somebody who is hating against us. There's always going to be somebody who's trying to hijack whatever we is going to do. I guarantee you from a month from now, and I'm saying this is on Facebook, a month from now, some somebody's going to come out and they say they're going to do a podcast or they're going to do a whatever group or whatever name they is uncensored. <laughs> and they're going to try to, I'm, 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 I, if they got a problem, they can find me. They, they're going to pull that out, you know. But you you can't mess with somebody who has a purpose. When you have a purpose and you're purpose driven, guess what? That takes you further and beyond whatever else there is. Now, Kibway, why are you I, shaking I, your I, head? I see, I see Kibway <laughs> because, be, because 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 I'm trying to hold back my spirit and not not go into that realm. I don't want to play fire with fire with clout chasers. I'm trying to make sure I fly like eagles. So I'm trying to make sure that my purpose is higher than what they have intended and what they're trying to do. So I'm going to leave it at that since Delana and Alicia and Kibway tag team me into this conversation based no, off my facial expression. No, I think that was profound. That was great, Delante. But, um, but, there are always going to be those people. Answer. Yeah, I, you are exactly right. I, I'm um, just trying to make sure. To, I, we don't have to entertain them, though. But correct. they're always going to be there. Because I tell you this much. Just uh, hearing Delante talk about the cloud chasers uh, made my blood pa uh, pressure rise up. I see okay? that. Because Close I your am eyes and everything. <laughs> I mean, when I tell you I am tired, because listen, this is the thing. They sometimes it's just a distraction, and this work is so important that I don't have time for the distraction. Do you know what I'm saying? And I know that the glory of being the leader is not always cracked up to be. So my thing is, is that sometimes I want to just follow and support people. Because guess what? When you are at the top, you get the glory and the pain, both. And a lot, most often times you get more of the pain, 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 a little bit of glory, pain, 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 a little bit of glory. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> you know, so when you but, know, you know. Okay, let, let, let me say this. This is, a, this is a free public service announcement to all the clout chasers there in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And, and, I, and I'm going to get close to the camera just a little bit. 
In order for you to lead, you have to learn how to follow. If you cannot follow, you cannot lead. There's no point in you trying to hijack and clout chase when you yourself or individuals, this is plurality, have not figured out how to follow. That does not mean we as change makers have the answer to every single thing. There are times, and we'll be real, we're being transparent, it's uncensored. All four of us don't agree on every single thing, but we learn how to come to an understanding because in our mind, the purpose is what's more important than what we feel. The purpose is more important for sometimes what we think. And sometimes we have to bow out to the purpose and not to the individual. That's just free. If, if you want more information, I will send you an invoice. Um, and it will be Bill <laughs> Change Makers. But that that's free tonight. That that I ha- that, that was my spirit. I had to say it. You know, I think I think first of all, <laughs> we got to clarify what that means, right? For some people who may not understand, like, like, well, what does it mean that what's a clout chaser? It's like, well, <laughs> it's it's somebody who values perception over purpose and i think the the slippery slope that people get on when they are chasing perception is that it is an ever moving target you can never do enough and once you get to that level of visibility you're looking for you then have to maintain that and if you don't have a purpose behind that your image, your stardom, your popularity become um, like a weight around your neck that you can't get rid of. And that is why, um, like Delante is saying, he's like, listen, everybody's gonna try this thing a different way. And um, the reality is time is the ultimate indicator of whether you are doing the right thing, uh, whether your your purpose is aligning properly uh, rather than just your perception. And and just like Delante said, you know, being a leader, um, you know, you have to know how to follow. That's that's a real basic way to put that. But I'm gonna go even deeper with that. Go ahead. First of all, being a leader (laughs) is about building up the people around you. It's about being the first one to go in and the last one to come out. It's about being always chained to the movement, to the idea, to the purpose. It's about losing all of the sleep. You get about 10% of FaceTime, Mm. you get about 10% of time in front of cameras. You get about 10%, you know, of of the the clout or perception or image. And when you're really doing things, when you're really leading, that's the least of your worries. Mm -hmm. Because this burden is so heavy Every time you get an opportunity, you just want people to understand your heart and why it's important that you're doing what you're doing. It's not about me. It's not about, you know, I think this and this is my movement. And no, do you realize most of all of our leaders die? Are you gonna die for perception? That's right. Look at people out here right now. Is that what you really want to go out for? This idea that you somebody that you're not? What are you learning? Who are you empowering? Who are you pouring into? Who are you listening to? Whose feet do you sit at? Yes. Don't talk to me about being a leader until you know how to listen, until you have a servant's heart, until you're Mm. willing to do the stuff nobody sees. So to me, I believe there is a self-fulfilling prophecy when you are just chasing your own perception. Um, It will inevitably lead you off of the cliff. And that's why I just don't, 
I, I, you know, I try to be kind to everybody because I'm not here to judge your heart. I know that if you ain't going the right direction for the, for the right reason, you're going to crash and burn. And mm-hmm. I pray that in that moment, you find grace and you find mm. some type of redemption and some type of clarity because it's going to happen. It's going to happen mm-hmm. whether you have purpose or not. The difference is mm-hmm. when that crash and burn happens and you know for a fact in your heart you are doing the right thing, not for selfish reasons, but because you want to see other people doing well. That is what brings you back to center. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, why do you think people go crazy? Why do you think movie stars and celebrities lose their minds? Mm-hmm. This ain't no game. Right. People out here going to jail over, over, over Black Lives Matter. Lives ruined. Malcolm X died. Martin Luther King died. You think James Baldwin enjoyed all kinds of, of, of accolades? He was constantly, constantly belittled. These people who live with death threats every day. You want to take time off <laughs> when you're tired. <laughs> and this is this is the reality of this. This this yeah. heaviness that you carry. Everybody needs days off. Everybody needs well, to look. manage their self care and things. But in my opinion, if you're chasing perception over purpose, I pray for you because you are only going to hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. And you have the possibility of leading other innocent people off of the cliff with you. And that's mm-hmm. on your head. Mm-hmm. That so. kind of leads us into our next conversation. Ooh, we got some preachers in the building today. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well. Which is, uh, I think is a super important topic right now because there's so many different ways and it's mental health. There's so many different ways that black people right now are feeling the heat it's like coming from all angles because while we're facing racism every day and seeing it online every day it's always in our face 24 7 at the same time one thing that really really starts to like i guess bug me and bother me is constantly having to explain equality why do i have to explain to you why we deserve the same treatment constantly it's like it's it's just basic common sense knowledge topics you know and it, it 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 gets tiring it really it really gets tiring um it's overwhelming <laughs> having to say the same thing over and over again. Like, why do I have to tell, I don't, I shouldn't have to tell you that just because I say Black Lives Matter doesn't mean I'm the organization. I'm a looter, I'm a rioter, I'm a, I'm a, you know, like <laughs> just because I say it's a, it's their words. Doesn't mean I'm affiliated with any rioters or looters or it literally means that I, I, I think Black Lives Matter, like, and they need to matter. They should matter. We should be equal. You know, it's just, it's stupid. It's really it, stupid. It forces you into a, a bit of a cycle. Just like you said, you have to keep doing something. Yes. And, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over yes. and over again and expecting yes. different results. And so what happens- And you never get different results. And you don't. And the, 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 what happens is you are constantly trying to help other people understand that you're a human being. I think sometimes people put black folks in this category of, of this, this, this weird anomaly that happens and then black people pop out. We don't really know where you came from or what you're doing here, but you're here. You, you we here. don't really relate to you, but we can't get rid of you. So just shut up and chill. And that's how I feel like sometimes you have to constantly show like I'm a human being. This offends me. Well, why would you be offended? Because I have feelings. Right. Because I'm allowed so to experience the whole span of emotional, um, you know, uh, um, depth, uh, connectedness. I mean, it, it just, you constantly feel insane because you have to say, 
you're okay with these things happening to people who look like me. Well, what mm -hmm. did they do? And if this you know were what? your child, that wouldn't be your question. Yeah. Right. If this were happening so, to you with the, with the data exactly. that exists, you wouldn't be asking these questions. You only say these things because it's me. Mm. And that and is the most here, boy, frustrating. They know. I, well, let me tell you, I am done being frustrated with people. I ain't arguing with you. I ain't going to post. I ain't going to comment to you. Nothing. They get none of my attention. See, there are levels, right? So when you are past frustration, then you start to calm down. Like, you know what? I got way too much work to do to be sitting on here arguing with these ignorant folks. If you are over the age of 35, I will not, sir, ma'am, be explaining anything about my life mattering to you. It's just not going to mm. happen. And I'm close to saying yeah. 25. You know what I'm 25. saying? Because they know. 25. They yeah. know very well. The thing is, is that they want to engage you in these stupid, meaningless conversations and arguments. You know what I'm saying? They want to pull you down into the dirt with them, but it's not happening for me. The thing is, is that we have to make sure that our work speaks for us. And that's what I am dedicated to doing. You ain't going to, now, back in the day, and back in the day, it's yeah. probably like two months ago. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. You will catch me in the comment section on Wayne TV. I-N-T, all of them, all of them, okay? I have been <laughs> arguing, honey. Yeah, I have people Googling my name, looking for yes. like, where I work, yes. all kind of stuff. Yes. I've been there cutting them up. But you know what? Every time I cut down one ignorant person, about eight more to roach Yes. Thing. Okay? So it's like you didn't mess with Queen Roach. Now about 10 of her babies coming out, all of them. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So what I do now, I don't do anything. Like they say, don't swipe at the B. I ain't swiping at you. I ain't going to look at you. You stay over there. I'm going to be over here. I'm going to be trying to empower my people, trying to engage my people. We have a whole lot to do. I don't need them to agree with me. I don't need mm -hmm. them to believe that my life should matter. Just ignore my life at this point. That's what you do. Right. However, if you are in a position of power, then you have to acknowledge my life period. But if you ain't got no power, then I ain't got nothing to say to you. This is why I don't have conversations with police officers, because they ain't got no power. Right, now, right. They got a little bit of leverage, right? They can make choices, but they can't change systems. And we need mm -hmm. systemic change, right? Mm -hmm. We need these systems to change. So it's bigger than these arguments. I don't post this stuff anymore. None of it, y'all. I am beyond frustrated. And you know when you get real angry, when you have a woman who's really angry, what do they do? Calm Stop down. talking. Stop talking. <laughs> they be done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Start there. cleaning. So, 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 so I, 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 I want to add on to this because my mindset has always been um, not all common sense is common. A lot of these individuals even when we gave the age range, 25, and we went to 35, we have to keep in mind where the ignorance actually came from because it didn't come from them. I'm pretty sure when they was in school, with by the age of, let's say, 35, kid boy, you about to hit 30 soon. We, 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 we ready for you. Hit 30, bro. Um, but, by, but even at kid boy's age, being 29, you know, being young, you still had those. It, it was more of a, it was a mixture. It was really no segregation even in the school system, I know for me. So I had white friends, I had black friends, I had Hispanic friends, I had everybody that was cool. But for whatever reason, it seems like when you become an adult, when you have to start paying bills on your own, you just lose your everlasting mind. That's where the problem comes in. And I'm on a fault because um, it's systemic. And when we say systemic racism, we're not just talking about overall racism and one location in the South. We're talking about a whole entire system of it. So that also goes to the education system. Look, if, if, if I could be transparent and this is bad, don't, don't do not deny my black card. Please do not. I didn't know because I went to an all white private school because that's where my grandparents wanted me to go when I was growing up because they wanted what was best for her, their grandchild. And so it's nothing wrong with wanting what's best for your child. I didn't learn what Juneteenth was till I moved to Memphis, Tennessee. 
the reason why is because they don't teach that mm -hmm. in the predominantly Caucasian environment of schools. And so for me, I'm out of touch with that reality until I start to learn. And so what I did this year was when Juneteenth happened, I posted um, as an app I have on my phone, um, it's neighborhood, and, and I posted on there, happy Juneteenth. I had all sorts of white folks come out of the woods and say, what is this Juneteenth? And some of them were ignorant to it. But the ones who, who are sincerely, and, and I think that's the key, we're not talking about the ones who are sincere because the ones who are sincere and are down for the cause and that wants to actually learn, those are the individuals we actually can work with to move things forward. Even when you look at Martin Luther King Jr., he had white people around him, everybody, but they were down for the cause. They did not get in his way. They supported his vision or his, as we said just a moment ago, his purpose. You know, what's crazy okay. is you say down for the cause and down for the movement. That's, that's Why do we even have to say that? It's it's regular, do you, do you, equal. Like, it's, it's, why do we have to, why do you have to be down for our lives be, to matter? Be, be, like, because, you know what I'm saying? Uh, You're I'm, saying, I'm, are I'm, you down for my life to matter? Like The, 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 re, the, re, the reason why we have to say that know? is because, let, let me say this, and I'm gonna be transparent, this is uncensored. Keep in mind, these are the same ancestors that came in and said the Indians didn't matter. So if they said the Indians didn't matter and they took their land, stole oh, it course. from them, murder and killed them. Of course. I used to, what do you think they're going to say? It just sounds funny to have to <clears throat> say, are it you does. down to save my life? It are it you does. down for me to matter and for my life, but, but, my kids' lives now, to matter? Now, now here's, where, here's, where <laughs> I, here's where the rubber meets the road with me. Black Lives Matter. When I fill out a census application or any other job application, I have to check due to the color of my skin and my ethnic background that I am African American backslash black. Don't know why person have to pick Blue Lives Matter. Because Blue Lives is a job. That's not a life. Mm -hmm. And I love my cops. I, I have family members who are cops and I, and I love cops that do what is right. But the ones who don't, they messing it up for the rest of the good cops. But that's the conversation for a whole nother day because y'all about to get my blood pressure. I, why yeah, that's, why that's do that's I be on this call Listen with y'all? Listen to y'all over 30 hey. people always talking about y'all blood pressure. Wait a minute, you over 30. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You over 30, I thought last time I checked. Uh, yeah, uh, and I talked uh, about my blood pressure first, so I'm included in that. Yes, I'm just saying. Okay. I just make it sure. I blood pressure a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I think they need to add a gold box because I'm not just black. I am black and gold. So I would like to say black lives matter, gold lives matter, and black power. <laughs> I'm tired of people asking me about the BLM movement, so I'm just going to start saying Black Power. That's what I'm going to start saying, can, okay? Can. That is my movement. Yeah. And then also, can. Gold Lives Matter. My skin is gold. I'm gold. So, I'm, I'm, Gold I'm, Lives I'm, Matter, too. I, I'm dark black, so I mean, I'm, I'm chocolate. <laughs> so, Chocolate Lives Matter, I guess. Let, let, me, let, me, let me throw this oh, one yeah. other thing um, before I forget, because Delana just almost threw me off. Yeah, y'all go ahead because I don't forgot what I was gonna say. Can I jump in on that a little bit? Yeah, go ahead. Can't, it's real important. Can't wait, can't wait. Don't start preaching now. Go ahead. Nah, I'm just saying. Bro. I think it's really preach important. Take your time. That separation, right? Me and Alicia are talking about the 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 inner, the inner process as you go through as mentally when you're trying to prepare yourself for your day, when you're trying to prepare yourself to get about your car and go into this dang on job where people don't see you. When you're trying to, you know, there, there's a lot of different mental preparedness that you have to do. Um, just because you realize on a fundamental level, people don't value your life the same way that they value theirs. Um, mm -hmm. And it's because of the fact that you're black. It's because they assume so many other things about you. And I, I completely agree with Delana too. It's like, you know, I'm not arguing. I mean, Indiana is, 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 does not mm -hmm. prioritize education, period. We nope. stand by that. Our religion is our mediocrity. And Ooh. the... The, the commitment we have to that speaks for itself. If you look at our ratings and our rankings as, as a state, 
with all the rest of the states, we ain't doing much. We ain't good mm -hmm. at much of anything. And that's oh. what's so funny to me. You know, you hear people talking, oh, who's your pride? And yada, yada, yada. I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm proud to be from where I, where I am from. I'm proud to be in this place, in this planet that I, that I, I inhabit on, on in Indiana. However, I can still be objective and understand that this doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And that the politics and the psychology behind the politics and the, the status quo that we are burdened by, because this is a burden, we are burdened with the rest of our state's ignorance on basic things is, is just ridiculous. And the fact that we have to carry it all the time is really, really a lot some days. And like you said, mm -hmm. Donald, mm -hmm. like, you know, you know, we passed the point of arguing. That's why we're here. Yeah. Right. We passed the point of, of, of being on people's Facebook feeds and, and trying to correct people. You know, I ain't preaching to you. This I'm is my point. I that, wonder this that, though. Either, though you not. Do you guys and, and and that goes, but that goes to show if though nobody else understanding what they're seeing, you're seeing our mental state mm -hmm. right now. It, it's to the point we're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're mm -hmm. tired of explaining. Black Lives Matter. We're tired. Of, we we get sick and tired of it. You know, make America great again. I'm gonna go address that. What has been great about America? Land of free. Oh, it's been great for, for who? Some people. For who? For who? Exactly. It's for been who? great for who it, it was supposed to be great for. Yeah, and, and, who it was and, meant and, to be great for. Them. So 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 one one of I think it was I think it was uh, might have been Mandy. I'm trying to look at the comments. You know, she she made a valid post. It's it's. Let me see if I can find it real quick because she said it is race based trauma traumatic stress is a real men racial mental health. That's issue. it. Yeah. So this so is I'm my mad. question about that. Uh huh. This is but this is going off into a whole nother thing. But I just an honest question. Go there. Okay? Go there. As a black person. Do you think that you would benefit from a white therapist? No. Yeah. Can I can I, can, I, can, I, can I can I get my testimony? I don't. I, I've been to one. I think and I would benefit. I, I, well, I, maybe it depends on the topic. If it was something, uh, uh, what's going on right now in my mental state yeah. right now, in my mental health right now, because of what's going on, there's absolutely no way that they could understand anything that we talk about. There's no way for you to understand or empathize or any on any level. I mean, I'm just being honest. Well, she can. She could tell us why if it's a man or whatever. The white person can tell us why they mama, they daddy, and their grandmama and them feel mad. Like that's what they can help. My thing is, is that yeah. Can you tell me why your great great? Great great, 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 great grandpa. Great, 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 great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I want to know, like, if, is there anything, like, still left in your heart? Like, <clears throat> yeah, we would have a conversation, but I think that they will not accept me back after the first conversation. We, um, yeah. But there, there, are, there are ways of thinking and uh, learning and meditating, things that, that I could definitely learn from any therapist across the board. But there is something to having someone that understands your struggles. We just like... Um, me and my sisters and I have had conversations for many years. Like, would you date outside of your race? You know, okay, perhaps. I don't know. Never have, but perhaps. Now, I won't tell y'all the, you know, <laughs> what, what, what the, I'm I done. won't tell y'all like what the criteria <laughs> is because that's too much. But what I'm saying is, is that if I came home and somebody just understood, like Kibway said, when you are sitting outside your job in that car, and you know you got two minutes left before you got to clock in or before you got to be in that job. Honey child, that is the worst feeling in the world. Like, Lord Jesus, don't let me cuss nobody out today. <laughs> Lord, am I going to quit today? Am I going to yeah. get fired today? I don't know. You never know, honestly. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so just somebody that understands that feeling, I mean, there's something to that. It's the same thing with the therapist, just walking through the door. A black therapist today would just know. Yeah, let's, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Can I say something? So. 
Go ahead, kill boy. I think, I believe that, you know, um, information is information and your heart is your heart. And I think those are the determining factors on how you're affected <coughs> with whoever client that you're working with uh, um, is, is, is felt by the person you're working with. And so I think, you know, if you have a, a white therapist that understands what this moment is, what this time is, what the history is, and, and understands where you're at on that spectrum and how you're, how you're internalizing and dealing with things, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think there's anything wrong with your white friends being like, yo, I know you heavy, but please hold on. What can we do for you? You doing all right? You need to talk about it. You know, just providing mm -hmm. space. Those are great things that don't, they don't, don't come with specific colors. After my mom passed away, I went to a therapist twice because I was having like some real bad like PTSD and some really disturbing dreams and stuff. And this white dude was a Catholic priest of all people. Um, and he helped me. There was some different ways he was talking about he was interpreting the things I was telling him that really helped me ground some of the emotions I was having. Um, and <clears throat> it was, it was very beneficial. I didn't continue to go to this gentleman just because there are certain things that bother me um, about um, the way that bothered me rather about the way he carried himself and about some of the other things I had heard about him. Uh, which led me to feel more uncomfortable uh, speaking on more intimate issues of my own emotional state. And I think once you have to, once you um, realize that or you come to some understanding that maybe I'm not in a safe emotional place to be processing this, then you start to reel back. But for those two sessions, he was doing exactly what I believe he was supposed to do and exactly what I needed. That is not to say that he was all that great of a therapist. It just means mm. I was doing exactly what I needed to do. And God, the creator, uh, Jah, whatever you want to call it, was using him to reach me in that moment. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. And, I, and especially as it pertains to what you're talking about, you know, as far as those moments where you just feel like your blackness, no matter how perfect you know you are no matter how professional no matter your status could be the very thing that tips you over the edge it don't matter what your whole life has been somebody do and say the wrong things to you is going to be very difficult for you as a human being not to feel incredibly disrespected and respond in a righteous in righteous indignation okay mm -hmm. would that be to, to 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 say some choice words to them or correct them uh, uh, vehemently about a comment, whatever that means. Um, I think you got to understand that we don't argue, we we don't battle flesh and blood so much. Mm, we, we battle principalities. We we battle spirits and mindsets and old traditions and ghosts, things that we save space for. And I think black folks are just as guilty in some ways of, of saving room for those same prejudices. I have encountered so many black folks that are so detrimental to the movement, it is just flabbergasting. But at the same time, um, I do understand where, you, where you're coming from. It's just like, I don't understand how a white person could ever understand where I'm coming from. Uh, Maybe that's <clears throat> not what they're there to do. Maybe they're just there to let you know that I don't understand but I see you. Yeah. I don't have to walk in your shoes to know that you're going a long way. I can see your feet. Mm. I don't have to do, you know what I'm saying? And I think that is, that is, is so important that we see each other and that recognition creates that connection, creates that bond. And I think that can happen to anybody. You know, you're going to be black your whole life. I don't care who you marry. Guess what it's going to say on your death certificate, your intake form, on every application, your social security number, black. You can hide behind whatever titles you want, but when you get pulled over in the middle of the night, what you gonna be thinking? Yeah. Blackity, black, black, black. black. Okay. <laughs> and the sooner you get with it and understand 
the better. Some folks, they think that they can hide behind these titles and these relationships or whatever it is. And everybody has a different path. I'm not here to judge you on your path. But what I am saying is understanding who you are is your biggest asset in any relationship and in any process you're going through as you are trying to mend your own uh, uh, broken spirit. You know, whether it is in counseling, a relationship, church, you got to understand who you are. If you don't understand who you are, how can anybody help you? Well, can I tell you guys, yeah. honestly, the one thing that made me not go with one therapist that I thought was really good, um, a white woman, um, the only reason that I did not go back to her was because I really, really wanted to be honest and say that, you know what, until white lives are taken at the same rate that black lives are taken, this is not going to stop. They have to feel the pain. Like when white people start to die, when police officers start to die, hell, when their dogs start to die, yeah. they are losing. Put the dog first. Wait, I mean, put the dog, dog first. first. Okay. Because so those dogs. Don't let Benny the police dog die. No. Okay. So until those things, like honestly, I did not want to go back to this woman just because. I said, some of the things that I wanted to come out of my mouth, I said, I don't even want to do that to that lady. She's a nice lady. And I don't want to do that to her. You know what I'm saying? That was the only reason. But I did think that there was something to speaking to someone who was outside of the trauma. Um, it is very hard to find a Black person right now who is not dealing with some type of trauma. Um, and so I think that sometimes just speaking to someone who is not um, in that, that mind frame you know, could help. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I speak to, you know, my white friends and they're just like, oh my God, Daylana, I should not have did that voice when I said my white friends, but most of them kind of talk like that a little bit. But um, <laughs> she was like, they don't all talk like that. I'm just saying, but she was like, she was, she's always really chipper. Oh my God, Daylana, like, I just love you. Oh my gosh, you're so funny. I love you. And I'm like, girl, I love you too. You just made me like think about daisies and flowers and stuff. And I was <laughs> thinking about something like blood and stuff like that, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, like this, now we know what goes on in the mind of Daylon. Yes, she's oh, revealing blood. uncensored. <laughs> what other things? But y'all know more. it's a lot of craziness. But sometimes talking to your friends who are not as stressed out as you are helps. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. If you yeah. come home to a traumatized husband, and I'm getting all into people's relationships, and I don't mean to do this, but if you come home to a traumatized husband because the blood, the white people at his job don't like him. And then you traumatized coming home mm -hmm. to and all that stuff together. And you ain't nobody processing, nobody talking through yeah. it, nobody's balanced. Yeah. It can be rough. And some it most of the time rough. you don't. It's kind of like a it's kind of like an a thing you don't even really talk about because it's just normal. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So it's not something you come home and that's, you're like, do you know what this white person did to me today? It's normal. Don't do that. There, because that. it's normal. Therein lies the problem. Mm -hmm. the, and, and that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother three hours but therein lies the problem amongst us as African Americans as when we do not know when it's to seek out help we, we are traumatized on the job we are traumatized in Kroger and Walmart mm -hmm. when oh. you have you know Kilway and I you know we we, we strong black men, but you know, we could be in the elevator with a white woman and she clutches her purse, that's traumatization. And, and it doesn't affect her, it affects us. Or because we said, because we said they're like, look, we trying to get to the crib to go to sleep. We're not thinking about you. And we, we not even, you're, you're not even on our mind, but media, movies, society, history has portrayed that role to think that all African Americans are nothing but animals, mm -hmm. but we have not done. We are we're doing a better job now, but historically we have not done an outstanding job at allowing African Americans to really seek help. We've always taught that look, what goes on in the house stays in the house. What 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 happens between us? That's it. Don't tell nobody in the business. We we've dealt with no snitching. There, there's a time to snitch. That we 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 we've dealt with so many different things 
to where when it comes time to talk to somebody, we don't know how because we have all this extra stuff loaded up. So when you seek in a counselor, one of, one of the first things I, I suggest is, look, you find a counselor that fits you. Whether that may be a black individual, more power to you. If you can find a white person that may relate and let's, let's, let us not sit and think that there are no um, Caucasian Americans that cannot relate to some aspect of the struggle that we have gone through. Because not there the are- struggle, but the pain. The, the pain, pain and trauma. The, the, the pain and the trauma of it, because there are some of those out there. Are they few and far between? Yes, but there are some out there. So when you're looking for a counselor, you have to find somebody who fits you. You have to find somebody who fits your needs. And, and when I say fit your needs, when I say that not fit your needs as to tell you what to do, but to be able to stand against you in opposition when you want to revert back. I need somebody that's in my corner that who understands me, not only just um, not even just socially, but also culturally. And so sometimes that may be for an individual, a black individual. Sometimes for a black individual, that may be a white individual. It's going to depend on that individual's upbringing. But we as African-Americans, and I'm saying this, this is a plug, stop making excuses that your great, 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 great granddaddy used to make talk about he don't want to go to the doctor. Go see somebody. Oh, my God. Because so everything you, said, you got going. I, I said. <laughs> Can you go back to that? I didn't know what you said. I thought you were talking said, about diabetes feet. <laughs> no, no, we 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 can throw that in there, but I'm saying don't. Go. I'm sorry, say it again. I said I said don't go, don't don't follow what your great 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 granddaddy used to oh, say. Okay. I didn't talk about nobody's feet, but if we want to throw that in there, yeah, <laughs> because 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 and the reason why I'm saying that is because it fits. There historically, for those who may be Caucasian watching this video, I want to give you some free advice. I'm just giving out free advice on the day. <laughs> historically black folks didn't go see the doctors so diabetes high blood pressure cancer whatever else was going on and affecting them we kept it in house and we were taught and we have a mentality to suffer with it and deal with it in 2020 we done we're not suffering with it we're not dealing with it we're going to see our doctors we're going to see our therapists and guess who we talking about we're talking about you I love to see the doctor, honey. We have my appointment. I have I have a black therapist. I love it. That and I, I go to black. see that who 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 is awesome and I recommend. And I know people who are watching this right now, there's a group of black therapists right now here in Fort Wayne. They're in Fort mm -hmm. Wayne that we can recommend to you all. But you have to be willing, and here's the key, that, that's, that's the thing about a therapist and a counselor. You have to be willing to open up. If you're not going to open up, it's not going to work. All right, I'm done to my time's next. I, I yield the floor to Kibway. I, I just want to say this. Um, for the, those who don't understand or who want to, you have to understand black folks relationships with normal stuff for you. If you're white and you're like, well, why don't people do this? Why don't they just do that? Why? You need to look up the history or speak to your black friends and stuff like that. Cause it's not, a, it's not, you're not wrong for not knowing. You're wrong for having these broad opinions about stuff you have not researched. That's what you're wrong for. Opening your mouth and saying stuff you don't know nothing about. So ask your friends or do some research. You have to understand the history of black folks and health the history of black folks in mental health, the fact that black women were experimented on. And that is why that we have some of the cures that we have today. The fact that our genetics were, 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 were constantly harvested to create different um, cures that we never got. The fact that black folks used to have to go to a vet to get, to get actual health care. And they would pull, there are real reasons why yes. black folks have, trauma that we have we're not just weird folks 
We have been no. traumatized systematically over yeah. time. And therefore that trauma lives in every generation and it's going unaddressed, which is why you have what's going on right now. You have this movement yeah. where we are tired of, of, of al allowing those things to be our status quo. And so we have to move forward. And for white folks who want to be allies, for white people who want or who may be in relationships with black people and they're trying to figure out why my husband or my wife always acts like this, you got to understand the history. And that will help you yeah. grow that bond with you and your, your spouse because now you understand each other. You have context for attitudes and behavior <laughs> and things like that. And I think that is so important and i think a lot of uh, of our white counterparts don't understand we don't have the same history as you that's right and that's why it's so yeah. that black lives matter because we don't have the same yeah. history as you we don't have the same values we don't have the same experience our history our a relationship with america as a whole is completely different from yours so no you're not going to see me teary-eyed about yeah. the flag no, you're not going to see me teary-eyed and, and wanting to stand up and put my heart, uh, my hand over my heart when they do the Pledge of Allegiance. Because I know right. what I'm talking about. Right. You know, so it, it, yeah, these are real right. things. I'm not imagining this stuff. Let, let, before Alicia goes to the next point, let, let me say this. Because, because I know she's going to go to the next point. Mm -hmm. it, 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 I, I'm suggesting and I can only make suggestions, that everybody who is watching this video watch 30 for 30 Bruce Lee. The reason why I am saying that is because if you look throughout all the major cities, what is the one city that well, you I'll find within a city? You find there, Chinatown. Anyway, go ahead. And the reason why you find Chinatown is because a lot of Chinese Americans, as Bruce Lee puts it, were submissive to the white man. The thing about African-Americans, we're not submissive. We're not submissive by nature. And we are Ooh. kings and queens in our own rights. And we're just not gonna bow down to just because somebody else don't like us because of our skin. Now, where there were some samples of African descent, yes. And if you don't know what the word Sambo is, I am encourage you, go. Google is your friend. You can Google it. We're not calling nobody Uncle Tom. So look up Sambo. I'm helping you out. But the thing about us is we're not submissive. We're, we're difficult to dominate. And for the last over 400 and plus years, you have to realize that you just can't tell us what to do. And you also have to realize that we ain't going nowhere. If it's not for us, all the economics and everything that you have, it wouldn't be in existence. There would be no Nike, there would be no Adidas, there would be no Puma, there would be no New Balance. There'll, look, there would be no Chick-fil-A, y'all. There'll be there none will of be that. no rhythm. <laughs> No music. No, no, no. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Period. Dave Chappelle. Wait a minute. Hold <laughs> on. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Petty Hold moment. Dave, okay. Dave Chappelle done showed the episode that said everybody got rhythm. It's just different. I, I, I shout out to Dave Chappelle for that. Um, but well, at this the same what I time, learned in music. But, Black people clap on the two and four. Mm -hmm. That's right. White people we, also, one and we, we could also clap on the eight. In music, learn that. Everybody know about that. They clap but, on the one and three. We clap on the two and four. That's all we but, 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 but transitioning back to, 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 to our, I really think the mental health aspect of it really that comes out is basically, and, and, and this might yeah. sound, I'm not hood that much. I, I do have hood dialogue. We just sick and tired of being sick and tired of y'all. And, and we are at a point right now where you come for us. And when we say us, we it's, it's no longer just our immediate family. That circle has gotten bigger. You come for one of us in another state, another city, we about liable. We are going to say something about it because we have gotten to that point to where when we say Black Lives Matter, we're not talking about the organization. We literally mean our Black Lives Matter. And our black ass. That. That's what we're saying. Exactly. And, 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 and this is to the white folks. Mm -hmm. If you don't get that, 
I'm sorry. You just one of the ignorant individuals in the world. But we're going to make sure before the end of this year, going into next year and the year after that, that not only you understand that, but our children understand that and their children understand that. Mm-hmm. We're not going through the same. Look, we, we had a shirt and this is a plug, y'all. We had That's a shirt. We had a change maker shirt, y'all, that, that I would love for y'all to participate and buy and purchase. The shirt said, uh, we are not our ancestors. You no. can literally get these hands. Our hands, not I am today, my ancestors through hands. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. I don't like people <laughs> belittling. I don't like people judging my ancestors. My ancestors <laughs> were about that life. Okay, <laughs> I'm from like the crazy. Malcolm X crazy. lineage. I'm just saying because people be acting like our ancestors and our grandparents. My granddaddy threw hands up. Okay, yeah. so we wouldn't be here today if somebody wasn't throwing hands. I just want to say that. <laughs> Now, we did have some people who are a little bit more docile, but that's still today. You know what I'm saying? So I just think we need to put a little bit of respect on our ancestors' names with that. Respect their names. Um, But I think that it's just that we are allowed to uh, speak more now. We do have more liberties now. We have to acknowledge that. We have more liberties now than they had back then. Um, Some people who are speaking up today would not have been speaking back then because they would have been killed for it. So right, before right. we kind of throw that judgment out there, we have to think about, you know, what they had to live through and what we do have some privileges that we have to acknowledge here. Right. That's all I'm saying about that. Um, Alicia, y'all want to move on? Right let's up, move on. Yes, right. let's wrap up. Let's wrap up. Yes. We have I been on here. To... Dang, look, we done took two hours of y'all. Look. Right. Did we get we any questions hours. from them? We did. We, 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 got a, we got our in depth. We, we talked about what we needed to talk about. I just wanted um, to, my brother put get something on it. here. My brother posted something on here, which basically said that, so what are we going to do about it? And I think that that is a question that we have all been asking ourselves for the past few months. Um, what are we going to do about it? We have had a lot of actions, amazing actions um, here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, um, but it's not over. It's nowhere near over. What I find myself doing is trying to outrun the next death. Mm-hmm. That's what I find myself literally doing. I'm trying to do all of this work so that when, because I'm not going to say if, when the next thing happens, I want us to have structures in place where we don't have to be building and we build it and we, you know, being so reactive. If we are proactive, right now if we if we are proactive right now and we are putting these things in place um she watching too if we put these things in place when these things happen y'all we won't have to uh be so reactive we'll already have that we'll have we'll have a structure in place already so i think with that are we still protesting why are we still protesting i think that's something that we were supposed to talk about um, and maybe we could end there. Um, what are we going to do about it? All of this stuff that we just spoke about, what are we going to do about it? Um, one thing that Changemakers is doing is we are still protesting because we know that there is a place for that. Uh, this Friday, September the 11th, we are having, we are protesting, okay? Uh, but it's a party though. It's going to be a party, dancing, celebrating. Uh, what do we have to celebrate, y'all? Delonte is over. Delonte, what do we have to celebrate? One thing. What do we this have is, to celebrate? This is voters' registration, y'all. Can't, can't. Let me, let me, let me, let me plug. Say one thing. Can you tell us one thing that we have to celebrate for? Because we partying. Voter registration party. What, what was okay. one thing that you can lift up right now? A reason why we can party. Could Black Lives Still Matter? There we go, Alicia. Progress, progress, constantly making progress. We're doing something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was trying to put the link in the chat. Um, uh, <laughs> testing, it's I still think fine. I did. Yeah, it you did. I I posted in the Re- repost it. We not repost done. it when you can. We, we have to keep moving forward. Right. This is an election year. We have to be strategic. We need to come out with a black agenda. 
and we need yeah. to make take that to our local officials and see who signs off on it. And we need to leverage so our opportunity program. is what Kidway's talking about. We're partying take because that, we that. have a great opportunity yes. right now. Yes. So that is what we are partying for. Is so is it a party? Day. Yes. Is it a protest? Yes. All of that. Voter registration, because we have the opportunity to do what now? And then I was just framing that up a kid way. All you need is an ID and an address. Do That's you have it. an ID and an address? Get your you ID don't. and your address and get registered to vote. Because once we you need... register to vote, you have the opportunity to vote in your local elections. I'm not talking about the Electoral College. I'm not talking about these broad. I'm talking about right here in Fort Wayne. You have an mm -hmm. opportunity to put people in place that represent your values, or at least some of them. If they represent two out of your 10 values, that's better than zero. You never go yeah. yeah. You have to we work need to that put way. people in there that are going are going to speak for us. And if they're yeah, not they gonna speak for us, and when they don't speak for us, we need to hold them accountable. Get them and when out. they and, and by holding them accountable, get them out of there. Like, if you're not going right. to do anything for us to help us, goodbye. We have and that power. And the next step we have is those numbers. Elect our own candidates, our own leaders from our own yes. communities. And we're going to support them in order to get us where we want to go. And that starts with voting. If you don't vote now, why are you going to vote then? We need your vote and if now. Any, and if any of those people who are running for positions of power see this video... What are you going to do for us? What can you do for us? How can you help us? I want to know. What that. is your black agenda? Exactly. What is your what agenda is your to help for black people? For creating equity for black lives here in Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. What is your plan for job growth? What is your plan for empowering entrepreneurs? What is your plan for empowering the southeast side of Fort Wayne? What is your yeah. plan? What's your plan? To stop the disenfranchisement of black and brown people and to stop uh, uh, the, the the cycle of toxic narratives that we all have to live behind and try to make lives for ourselves in spite of. What is your plan to do that? As yeah. far as education and access, talk. That's what I wanna hear about. So if we can, if we can get all this together and, and choose those people, we have that power. Like we have that power to, if you don't do, if you don't do what we need you to do, goodbye. Okay, everybody jump on this person. He said he's gonna do this for us. He said he's going to come for, through. In order for Black people to have this power, guys, we actually have to stick together. Black people, brown people, our allies. We are going to have to rally together or we will not have any power. It is divide and conquer all over again. If they divide us, uh, for all of these different things, or oh, your skin color is that color, your skin color is that color, this is your religion, I'm not religious, blah, blah, blah. They're going to try to divide us in all these different ways to keep us separate because we actually have more power when we unite. So I think it is very important that we understand that while we do have a lot of active groups in this city, and that is amazing, um, but we are going to have to make sure that we all support each other. There is a time to protest. There's a time to boycott. There is a time to uh, walk into the city council meetings, all of that. It's time for all of it. If yeah. my brother and sister organization over there is doing something that I agree with, I'm coming to support you. Exactly. If you're doing, over there, doing something over there, I'm going to go and support you over there as well. And I think that that's the type of time that we have to be on. We um, need to also, support each other. In the spirit of being active and getting people out to vote, we do have this protest on Friday, but additionally, we are canvassing every Thursday. Every Thursday, we are literally having um, 8,000. Our goal is to have, we, we need to get some black, brown, our allies, everybody around Fort Wayne. If we could get you guys to con contact me or Kimway or Alicia, because they're the point people here, contact any of us, the change makers email, and let us know that you would like to canvas with us. We're gonna be calling yes. people. We're gonna be calling those populations that, that they don't call, that they forget about. Uh, the voices that they say don't matter. We're gonna be calling them and saying, hey, are you registered to vote? Why is this vote important to you? You know, so I think that um, you guys should all kind of activate in that way with us. So canvassing is happening every single Thursday please reach out to us so that you can join our canvassing team and we can start to shift these votes in the right direction. 
Um, a couple hours, y'all. Yeah. Super easy, super easy program. Yeah. Couple hours. You don't even have to be there a couple hours. Take an hour. Take one hour. Take 30 minutes, and then come back. Take another 30 minutes. Like, whatever you can. Like, it's super easy, and this is important right now for us. And, and we here's have to thing. move right now. And here's another thing. We have to support each other. Support black products, support <clears throat> black businesses, subscribe mm -hmm. to black channels, you know, subscribe to black Facebook posts, subscribe to black YouTubes, like support people because that makes a difference. If you understand the way algorithms and things like that work, your support equals dollars. And that mm -hmm. those dollars create more initiatives, create more dialogue. This stuff doesn't come out of nowhere. You mm -hmm. have to support. The, the the lack of support that we experience in 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 the yes. black community is is a direct result of us not being aware and if we don't support each other and we don't and if if you're an ally and you don't support anybody and your whole timeline is full of other white folks that you support like i have all kind of folks in my timeline because i support all kind of folks and that's what you should be doing that's how you gain this well-rounded idea about society it's not from just going and doing everything you normally do you have to be intentional so go support black businesses because then you'll see more black businesses you'll see thriving black businesses and you'll see more people who are employed and you it, we have to start we have to start there is no perfect there's no home run you just have to start and you have to keep going and keep going and keep going that's what we're still protesting creating events doing digital canvassing if you have inf if you have questions about any of that reach out to us we will point you in the right direction we got yes. all kinds of stuff we're doing we will have more information for you guys very very soon um but this stuff takes time and the more you support it gives us more of an opportunity to do that stuff so yeah. i encourage you to put yeah. your money where your mouth is and invest donate Perfect. help i give so much time away for free we don't get paid to do this we do it because we love it and because we want to be a blessing to our people. We want to be a blessing for other people who are disenfranchised, black and brown people, uh, um, um, uh, poor white people, all these people who don't never vote. Like there's so many people who are falling between the cracks and they fit in all kinds of different demographics. Come with us. We can make this happen. We got the numbers. So we let's envision do a poor way yeah. that is not known for white supremacy, but is known for diversity. That's yep. why we're doing this. Yeah. We have a vision. That's right. So. All right, y'all. Yeah. It's 10.01. So we are going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, tuning in. We have talked about so many different topics tonight. I'm so mm. excited about everything we have covered. And um, I feel like a weight is lifted off me, kind of. Like, Man. after this, you know, get like getting it all out, you know? So. We thank you guys for allowing Look, us to vent. One, one more thing. I feel I have to plug this. And this is probably one of the most important plugs that I am going to put that relates to this coming Friday. There is a secret party, y'all. Y'all have been <laughs> stuffed and locked in the house since March, I want to say maybe 15th of this year. Some of y'all didn't follow the governor's orders and rules. Some of y'all did. But this is an opportunity to get out the house. Put on your, look, dress in all black. Wear your best black. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know how you can wear better black than blackity black, black, black. And, and, and register for this event. I'm, I'm telling you, look, look, I, I, I don't, this would be one of the better events. Diddy couldn't even hold a better event. Uh, 50 Cent couldn't hold a better event. The reason why I'm saying that is because this event can help build momentum towards November. Don't just do it as a clout, but think of the purpose. Get registered to vote. We need every vote counts. And if you think your vote don't count, you might have been one of the reasons why we're under the current government system that we in. But if you want your vote to count, we need you out there. Um, 
gonna so party to the pole. We 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 gonna we gonna turn up. We gonna turn. We gonna turn up. We're going to have fun. We're going to be safe. Um, but we want to make sure that everybody that shows up is registered to vote. And, and if you know somebody that's not registered to a vote, man, invite them to the party. It's a simple process. They can get it done within, what, three minutes? And, and, and they can still have fun, especially at the location of where we'll be meeting at. And it's a secret location. I, I, I just know how we are. We like secrets from time to time. And, and when you registered for the event, you will find out the location. I believe it's about an hour and a half, hour or so to the start of the event. But you got to register. If you don't register, I, I don't, I don't want to be seeing on Facebook like, man, I, I, I missed this event. Well, you had the opportunity to register. Don't be in the background sitting where you can be actually in the club getting in. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so so that's that's my Wakanda forever. That's that's my spill. That's my plug. I I, I hope, trust, and pray. I see you this Friday. Um, we we will definitely have a party. Oh All yeah, right. rest in power to Chadwick Boseman, our Black Panther. Power. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. See y'all later on another episode of uh, Change Makers Uncensored. Hey. Hey. Y'all be good now.